G'day! In January 2011, there was a breakthrough in a famous, tough, unsolved problem in mathematics, something to do with the partition numbers. In this video, I'd like to give a brief introduction to what the partition numbers are, give some results about them, and I'll try to prove some things about them too, and then give a sense of what Ken Ono and his colleagues announced a couple of months ago about that breakthrough. Okay, partition numbers. What are they? Well, it's really child's play, actually. So here's a game. Here are some blocks. And imagine I'm just in my, my sand pit and playing with my blocks and I want to make trains. Suppose I want to make trains that are four units long, but I've got blocks available to me that are one unit wide, two units wide, three, four, five units wide, maybe six, seven, eight, and other buckets down the road. So I'm going to ask, how many trains can I make using blocks of these dimensions? And what I mean by a train is just simply a row of blocks that make a length of four. For example, I could put three and one together, and that makes a train which I'll describe as three plus one of length four. I guess I could also actually put it in this order and have a train of one plus three. And the question is, how many tra different trains can I make with these blocks? So there's two examples. I guess I'll keep playing this game. I can certainly do a train of two plus two and maybe a train of just a block of four itself. Not a very exciting train, but it's a train. Uh, maybe I could do, oh, this is gonna be complicated now. I could do two ones and a two. Okay, so one plus one plus two. And I guess I could rearrange that into a train of one plus two plus one. Or I guess I could re rearrange that as well into a train of uh, two plus one plus one. Uh, some people might not like these. They might say that's basically the same example over and over again, just a different order. That's actually a good issue. Let's, let's talk about order in a moment. But I think I can still make some more trains. There's probably another train I can make. Let's see, I can do four ones. And if I reorder those, it doesn't matter. That will definitely be the same answer. So I guess another option is four ones. One plus one plus one plus one. Now, I haven't done a very good bore technique here, but I'm sort of around a room. But it looks like out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, there are eight ways to make a train of four using my collection of blocks. That's if I consider order important. So, four blocks. If I want a train of, sorry, four, a train of length like four blocks. If order is important, it looks like there are eight ways to do it. If order is not important, now let's see. Oh, Trisha's handwriting, excuse me. Uh, I guess those two examples would be deemed the same. Uh, that example would be legitimate. I guess the block of four is fine. I guess we decided those three would be deemed the same and that set there, doesn't matter how I order it, it's gonna still be the same. So it looks like there's only one, two, three, four, five unordered partitions of the number four. I just used the word partition. That's the official math word for ways to break down a number, in this case the number four, into a sum of smaller parts. It could be the whole number itself, could be a whole bunch of ones, could be things in between. So there's two types of partition numbers out there, the ordered partitions and the unordered partitions. Let me talk about those next. So we've just seen, if I want to make a train of length four and I care about the order of the blocks I use, there are eight ways to make a train of length four. I may want to pause and play with this for a while and actually try to fill in this table yourself, but well, obviously the first time is easy. How many ways can I make a train of length one? I guess there's just one way that, that I can fill in. Things get interesting for numbers two, three, and certainly for the higher numbers. How many ways can I make a train of length two if order is considered important? Well, I could do a block of length two, or I could do two ones. That's like there's only two ways. Not too bad. Three could be three ones. Could be three itself. It could be a block of two and one, or it could be a block of one and two. So it looks like there's four ways to make a train of length three. Uh, I guess an exercise for you, maybe we'll just pause for a moment, or we'll play with it. it. Turns out there are 16 ways to make a train of length five. It turns out there's 32 ways to make a train of length six. And if you look at these numbers, you suspect there might be a nice mathematical formula going on here. In fact, it looks like for train of length n, we have the number of possibilities is two to the one less than n. Whoops, the, the number of ordered partitions is two to the n minus one. Now, why is that true? How can I prove that? So really, Making a train of length n, excuse me, I need to reach and get my eraser, which is a handy dandy tissue. How can I make a train of length four? Well, I'm going to take the basic four blocks. How could I look at these four blocks and see that there's actually eight ways to make a train of length four? Well, there are three spaces between the blocks. If I put a plus sign 
in each of the spaces, that represents the solution 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. Imagine if I chose not to put a plus sign between the spaces, and that I was determined, uh, well, I'll, I'll uh, regard a lack of plus sign as gluing. So there's no plus sign in that space, and now it looks like I've got the position 2 plus 1 plus 1. Or maybe instead, I'll choose not to put a plus sign in the middle, and not to put a plus sign at the end. This is very smudgy, but I will put a plus sign in the middle, at uh, the first position, and Lack of plus sign means gluing, and it suddenly now looks like I've got the train 1 plus 3. So actually making partitions with order considered important of length 4 is equivalent to just simply choosing to put a plus sign in a space or not to put a plus sign in a space. There are two choices for each space, there are three spaces, the total number of choices must be 2 to the 3 ways to make an ordered train of length 4, that's 8. That explains in general for n there are two to the n minus one possible trains if order is considered important because there are n minus one spaces. Each space has two choices. All right, that's the ordered partitions. Not much of a breakthrough there. It's the unordered partitions that are interesting. All right, we have the ordered partition numbers licked. They're just the powers of two. Now let's move on to the unordered partition numbers. Here are all the partitions of the number four. Uh, since order doesn't matter, we get to order them any way we like, and it's become the convention to always put the higher numbers first and the smaller numbers near the end. So of the partitions of the number 4, we have 4 itself, 3 plus 1, 2 plus 2, 2 plus 1 plus 1, and a whole bunch of 1s. So there are the five unordered partitions of the number 4. In fact, when the mathematician says the partition numbers, they usually think of these ones, the ways to do unordered partitions of the number of each particular number. So, what's going on? Here's n, p of n, let's make stand for the nth partition number. And we've just shown that the fourth one is 5. Now you can have some fun and games if you like playing with these blocks and actually fill in this table yourself. For example, there's only one way to partition number 1, just have 1 itself. 2 can be 2, or it could be 1 plus 1, so there's two ways to partition number 2. For number 3, it turns out there are three ways. 1 plus 1 plus 1, 2 plus 1, and 3 itself. And then things get a bit harder. For 5, it turns out there are 7 ways to partition the number 5. You might want to check that. The number 6, there are 11 ways. And right now, we should be getting excited because look at these numbers. 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11. These are the primes. So actually, in order to find the, uh, a formula for the partition numbers, all we have to do is find a formula for the primes, it seems. Hmm, that's not an easy question. Uh, unfortunately, don't be fooled by patterns. For 7, it turns out there are 15 ways to partition the number 7. And then there's 22 ways to partition the number 8. You might want to check this, and that's definitely not prime. Uh, for 9, I believe it's 30 ways. For 10, I believe there's 42 ways. Now, I don't have these other numbers in my head, but on my trusty bit of paper, uh, these numbers tend to grow. For 20, it turns out there are 627 ways to partition the number 20. Uh, optional exercise, double check that. For 50, things start to get a little bit uh, hairy. It's 2,004, 226 ways to partition the number 50. For 100, these things grow mighty fast. Try 190 million, 969, 292 different ways. And for uh, 1,000, I'm not going to write the number, it's about 32 digits long. It's 2.4 times 10 to the 31. That is a huge number. These partition numbers grow incredibly fast, incredibly quickly. So the unsolved problem that's out there, well, maybe not anymore, as of January 20, 2011, is, is it possible to find a formula for these partition numbers? This has been around for centuries, and the first person to really make a good crack at that was Leonard Euler in the 1700s.